Okay, we're going to talk about um, another type of isomer, and this is a particular type of stereoisomer. Isomers, again, are molecules that have the same number of atoms, the same types of atoms, and they're just connected um, differently. A stereoisomer is when atoms are connected differently in three-dimensional space. That's where we get the stereo from. And the two that we're going to talk about now are stereoisomers that occur when you have a double bond and stereoisomers that occur when you have a ring. So let's imagine we have a fatty acid. These are present in your bloodstream. They have a carboxylic acid and then a large hydrophobic fatty group to them. <clears throat> now, right here, we have an example of a generic saturated fatty acid, one that has uh, been saturated by hydrogens. There's no double bonds in there. But there are unsaturated fatty acids, and those contain double bonds. We don't have as many hydrogens as we could on this carbon chain because we have that double bond in there. Here's a uh, monounsaturated fatty acid, this would be a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Hmm. Now, the thing to remember um, is that when you have this double bond in here, you've sort of locked the rotation around that carbon-carbon bond. Each of these sigma bonds here, these single bonds, can freely rotate, but in order to maintain this double bond and the pi bond that's occurring through the p orbitals that are present on each of these carbons, we can't freely rotate that bond without breaking it, without breaking that double bond. And so whenever you have a double bond, you've sort of locked it into place. And that um, causes us to have different isomers possible uh, for molecules that have alkenes in them double bonds. Now, when we look at this double bond, we can imagine writing out this fatty acid uh, so that this double bond is oriented in a different way. So let's write carboxylic acid, and here's going to be another version of this double bond. We can look at it and say, well, We've got the same number of atoms, the same number of hydrogens, but really the orientation of the molecule in three-dimensional space is different between this and this double bond. Okay, let's put this one here just to remain constant. Now, if I'm saying that this double bond is locked into place and I can't freely rotate that bond, then this molecule is different from that molecule. They're isomers of each other. And we need some sort of nomenclature in order to describe which of these molecules we're talking about. One where the double bond looks like this, one where it looks like that. Now, the nomenclature we use is, um, at least the first level of it, is called a cis-trans nomenclature. And the way we can determine whether we have a cis or a trans version of a particular double bond is what I like to do is sort of draw a little dashed line I'll do it in different color ink along the length of the double bond and then I'll circle the more interesting thing that's present on each carbon. So here, here's a carbon that's part of the double bond. This group, carboxylic acid, is much more interesting than the hydrogen which is going down. I haven't written it because I don't need to in my skeletal structure. So that's more interesting on this carbon, this carbon chain is more interesting than the hydrogen that's not drawn there. So if I look at the two interesting things, I can see that they're on opposite sides of my dashed line, and therefore this is a trans, which means a cross, a trans double bond. If I do the same thing with this other isomer, interesting, interesting. Remember, we're looking at the interesting thing on each carbon. What are the two other things on this carbon? Carboxylic acid or the hydrogen. Carboxylic acid wins, beats the hydrogen. This carbon, this alkyl chain, beats the other hydrogen. 
And in this case, we've seen that the two interesting things are on the same side of that double bond, so we call that a cis. Now, this was just in fatty acids. You may have heard of trans fats. This is where they come from, is they have some trans double bonds in them, which normally don't occur um, in vegetable or animal sources. They're laboratory-derived fats. Now, here's some simple ones. Let's look at this. This is cis or trans. Well, let's draw our little line. Go one carbon at a time. This carbon has a methyl group and a hydrogen. Let me draw in that hydrogen just to make it clear. I'll draw in this hydrogen just to make it clear. This carbon, the methyl group, is more interesting than the hydrogen. This carbon, the methyl group, is more interesting than that hydrogen. Both of these interesting things are on the same side of the double bond, and therefore this would be a cis molecule. Let's look at this example. Again, we'll draw a line straight through our double bond, and we'll start with this carbon. Well, what's attached to this carbon? A methyl group, another hydrogen. The methyl group's more interesting. This carbon, what do we have? A methyl group and another methyl group. I can't decide between those two, and so this one has no stereochemistry. There is not another isomer of this double bond. It doesn't matter whether this methyl group is on the same side as that methyl group or whether it's on the same side as that methyl group. It would be the same molecule. Okay. Now, we can also use this cis-trans nomenclature when we have bonds, carbon-carbon bonds, that cannot freely rotate because they're locked up in a ring. In order to rotate any of these carbon-carbon bonds 180 degrees, we'd have to break the ring. And so if you have substituents on a ring, we can use wedges and dashes if we'd like to describe the orientation of these substituents relative to each other in three-dimensional space. And in this case, instead of drawing a line through a double bond, I really think of the ring as the plane, which I'm uh, using as, to determine the relative positions of these substituents. This methyl group is pointing up above the plane of the ring. This one is pointing down below the plane of the ring. They are on opposite sides of the ring, so this would be a trans molecule. we might imagine a cis version of this dimethylcyclopentane where both methyl groups are pointing up or pointing down. That would be the same molecule and would be called cis.